friends, welcome to my kitchen once again. Some of us are all getting busy and ready, especially here in, in the United States as um, Thanksgiving approaches. So some of us are baking ahead of time and trying to get a lot of stuff done. Well, I'm one of those. Today I'm doing um, pumpkin scones. It's something that I always like to have it in my freezer because you can make it, you can freeze it, and then you can just pull it out. And when your family's here and you always have something, um, if you know somebody shows up and comes in the morning and you don't have time to be making breakfast, just pull some scones. So this is what I'm doing. And this is ideal for this time, especially, you know, fall. This has all the warm spices. And this is ideal for, for this. So, and I'm gonna show you how I make my pumpkin scones. And when I make it, it goes. If I don't freeze it right away, it disappears in this house. So let me, let me show you what do I have in here. I have, uh, four and a half cups of flour, all-purpose flour. I have a half a cup of heavy cream and two eggs, half a cup of um, brown sugar, half a cup of regular sugar, and I have four different spices. That's what makes this whole thing. I have nutmeg, I have cloves, I have ginger, and I have um, cinnamon. In here I have salt, uh, baking soda and baking powder, and then I have one cup of pumpkin, pumpkin puree. You want the pumpkin puree, you don't want the pumpkin mix. That's not what you want, you just want the pumpkin puree. And then, um, and then let's get started. So I'm gonna add all the spices to my flour. And when you bake this, your whole house smells so good. I'm gonna add all the salt and baking powder and baking soda. I'm gonna add my sugar. And I like the combination of brown sugar and uh, white sugar because um, it makes a, a good combination that brown sugar, it kind of brings the molasses and it kind of brings the, all the flavors of the warm, um, the winter and the fall. So you mix this until it's all combined. And, uh, and this gives quite a bit. So it depends to the size you make. And I have uh, three quarters of a cup of butter and I'll get it out of my freeze or refrigerator because the butter needs to be very cold. And I cut it into little cubes and I'm gonna add all this to my flour. Now, you can mix this with your hands, but I like to use the pastry cutter because if you're gonna mix with your hands, it's gonna warm up that butter and you want this butter as cold, all this stuff as cold as possible. I just took all this out of the refrigerator, all my ingredients, just because I want them to keep as cold as possible. Um, so this is, like I said, it's an ideal thing to do for holidays and uh, just make it and keep it in a freezer. And, uh, uh, and it's delicious to give it as gifts. If you give this as a gift, people will just think, wow. Because, you know, you go to Starbucks and one of these scones, it costs almost five bucks. So that's why I make mine. And I always have, and I give them away for gifts. When it comes to the holidays or sometimes birthdays, I make scones all year long. But when it comes to this time of the year, these pumpkin scones, I don't know why we always only eat a pumpkin scones at this time, but it just, it just tastes so good. Um, but you just want to kind of cut all that butter in there until it resembles like a crumble. You don't see very much, you just see little pebbles of butter. 
you can mix with your hands if you see some bigger chunks but this is pretty much cut up so the flour is ready so into the whipping cream i'm gonna crack two eggs and i'm gonna mix these eggs with my cream and you know i've done some of this with the milk because i didn't have cream don't do it go get the cream it makes a big difference okay and i'm gonna add the pumpkin as well in here and then mix all this and this is about a cup of pumpkin and i'm gonna mix all this till it's kind of almost well incorporated this this in a, when you bake it with a cup of coffee and like i said your old house my neighbors know when i'm baking scones because the whole neighborhood smells and they know some of them even know what kind of scones i'm baking funny because oh you must have been baking vanilla scones i could smell it and then we're going to incorporate it, all this into here And that's why you like I said you want all this cold because it keeps that butter cold if you do anything hot the butter is gonna melt and then you're not gonna have those pockets that when you bake you get these little pockets and this becomes like a, a mixture it's not a wet mixture um, you know it's kind of a crumble mixture and you kind of have to work a little fast with the dough with your hands to um to make it go and form into a ball and that's what i'm gonna do right now so i'm gonna try to form all this incorporate all that flour in there and uh, um and then I'll uh, form into shaping the scones. Once you learn how to make scones, you'll never want to eat those you buy. You want to make your own. And that's what happened once I made the first one. I always had the impression that scones were something hard and dry. It was like, and I, I was not the only one. I have a lot of people that say the same thing. Oh, scones are so hard and dry. I go, not my scones. So you kind of just wanted to make sure you incorporate all that flour. And like I said, it kind of becomes a sticky dough at one point, but you don't want it too sticky where you can't form into a ball. And if you do just flour your hands and uh, um, and it will take it away. Okay, we got a ball. Okay, so now we're gonna shape. And I'm gonna cut this into two. Cause I wanna make um, about a six inch diameter ball. Now I put parchment paper underneath because I don't wanna put no more um, flour. But if you don't have parchment paper, just put some flour underneath and then uh, you can roll it and it's ideal. And you kind of, like I said, you don't want it too thin, but then you don't want it too thick. So about, I'd say maybe half inch. Um, and then I'm using a, a scraper, but if you don't have a scraper or a knife, will do. And you just cut it like you're cutting a pizza and you want to give you eight little triangles and these will be the perfect size and like i said this will be ideal for christmas for gifts so 
put it on your tray. And I have my oven preheated. Um, of course, the ovens depends, your oven. Mine I have it at 400, but yours might need it at 300. My oven, it's not regulated right. So now I'll do the other ball. And if you double this, make, you can do this in no time. Like I said, when I make it, it disappears in my house. I have to put it in a freezer right away. Um, the other thing, this is another thing that I've done and but sometimes when it comes to your family, your ovens, you can do all this. You cut it and then you put it in a cookie sheet and you freeze it. Then when it's frozen, you put it in Ziploc bags and you take it, you take out of the Ziploc as you need it. So let's say you need six, you take six and you bake it. You need to let them thaw out. Um, a little bit so I would say if you want them to bake them take at least an hour but keep them in the refrigerator do not take them out that the butter melts I would leave them in the refrigerator and let them thaw it out even if you do it overnight the night before take what you need and leave it in a in a freezer I mean in the refrigerator and if it gets to where you find the dough is too soft, like right now, I would put this in a refrigerator, let it get cold. So when it goes to the, the oven, the oven is hot, it starts cooking, and but it doesn't let the butter melt. But this one is really cold, so I'm gonna put it in, uh, in my oven. And like I said, we're gonna cook that for until it start getting golden brown. Okay friends, now we're gonna make the glaze. There's two glazes that go on top of the cinnamon rolls. We have the plain glaze, which is just powdered sugar and um, heavy whipped cream. And you kind of want it where you can drizzle over the, the scum. This is just the plain one. And then we have it's the pumpkin cinnamon drizzle. And I have here two, three tablespoons of pumpkin puree. I have half a teaspoon of cinnamon, half a teaspoon all spice. And we're gonna add this. And you don't wanna do, have the scones without this, especially these. And then in here I have um, a cup and a half of powdered sugar. And I'm gonna add this slowly to combine with the powdered sugar. And then we'll add some of the cream. And this is what makes the whole pumpkin scone smell and taste so good. So I'm gonna add three tablespoons and I'm gonna add it slowly. I'm gonna add one tablespoon at a time until all this um, powdered sugar is com all combined in here. And so what I do is, I make this in batches. I make big batches, and I always have it in a fridge. Like this one, I just had it in a fridge because I had just made some scones a couple days ago for our customer. So, um, and I had some of that left over. But this one, I didn't, so. But I always have it, I keep it in uh, little bottles. So I always have, so I'm gonna add another tablespoon of cream until you get that consistency that you want and you use all the powdered sugar. And that's what you do and this, you'll drizzle over that one. It is so delicious. This is one, especially at this time of the year, one of the most I sell is the the pumpkin scones. This or the pumpkin cinnamon scones. Those go too. So 
So you want it enough to drizzle, but not too, not too thick and not too thin. So we add all the powdered sugar, and then we'll, we'll see how, and once you put it in a squirt bottle, it'll be easier. It needs a little bit more cream. I'm gonna put a, just a little bit, not a full teaspoon, tablespoon, maybe a half, just because I don't, I don't wanna be too thin. So I have all this done when my scones um, come out this is all done so um, I have my plain glaze the vanilla glaze oh um, I also put a little bit of vanilla here so it is um, a cup and a half of powdered sugar uh, I put about, I'll, I'll slowly, I add maybe about three or four tablespoons of heavy cream. And then I add a little bit of vanilla. And like I said, this is the consistency you want to drizzle over your scones. If you put them in a freezer, you do not put this. You don't have to put this. You can do this after you take them out. Um, you know, if you cooked them and put them in a freezer, then you thaw them out and then you drizzle these two because if you put it in a freezer that sugar is going to dissipate and you're not going to taste and this is what makes the whole scone so um when the scones are done i'll show you what do i how i do it okay friends my first scones have come out of the oven and this is what you're looking for this little grooves this is all the flaky of the butter and so now we're gonna drizzle some of the vanilla glaze. And like I said, so you just want a little light coat. You don't need it too thick. And I let it drizzle. So you'll have it like this and let it dry. Leave it aside to dry. This is the best part is this. And for those that cannot have um, sugar, for those diabetics, you can use the same exact recipe and just replace with uh, the sugar. Um, you can use, they make um, powdered sugar now for um, diabetics. Um, that's, um, I think it's Trivia. I've seen powdered sugar. You can use that. And as far as for the inside, I would use coconut sugar or uh, the Trivia too. So there is, you can substitute for, for uh, low sugar for people who have diabetes. I mean, even though this doesn't have a lot of sugar, but it's this sugar on top. Because if you make it without even all the sugar inside, it'll be fine. So it kind of gives this nice glaze on top. And so now I'm going to let this sit here and dry for about 15 minutes and then we'll drizzle the other one. Okay, friends, it's been 15 minutes, and now you just drizzle this one over. You just want a little bit. Not only it kind of decorates, but it's going to give a, a different flavor to the scone. And that's all you do. And you let this sit and let it dry for 15 minutes and then you can plate it and serve it to your friends. I can't help. I can't wait 15 minutes. Look at that. And I'm going to try it. I love them warm. These are delicious.
you know when you need that afternoon pick me up this is perfect it's sweet but it's not very sweet and then all those spices and the pumpkin you try this and it might be a thing that you will do from now on when it comes to the holidays if you're gonna have i mean i know this year we're limited how we can do things but when you have your family and they want something hey just pull those out of the freezer and serve them so anyway give it a try this recipe and uh comment me on my uh channel on youtube or on facebook or on instagram how you like this recipe but give it a try it's like i says it's easy and you can make a bunch and give it out for friends for Christmas. That's what I do. Anyway, thank you for all those that subscribe to my channel. And those who haven't subscribed, please do. I do appreciate your your all your input and you subscribing to my channel. And uh, I can't thank you enough for all um, the wonderful comments and suggestions that I receive. I feel very blessed. And anyway, uh, until next time, let's get cooking.